Hey guys, Yoda Joe 93 just got home from an amazing, insane binge party for Cobra Kai Season 4. So guys, before we do the actual review for Season 4, I'm going to do something differently that I haven't done yet. Before I give you my actual review of Season 4, I'm going to leave you guys with a little bit of a teaser and build up that review even more. So I'm going to do my season ranking video before I do my overall season ranking so i tricked you i gave a little surprise didn't didn't expect that did you so we're gonna rank worst season to best season to better season or i should say greatest season to second best season and so i think we're gonna get down to it okay so coming in last place at number four because there's four seasons we're going to go with season two now here's the thing with season two we did get the epic school fight, but we also got unnecessary drama and character moments that just didn't feel right. Like, the school fight was badass, don't get me wrong, but it just... I love Sam as a character, and I don't like how Sam was written in Season 2. And I don't like how, um... There's decisions that just didn't feel right. The, the love triangle was a bit too much between what was going on with Tori and Sam, the way it was handled... It just, the Robbie and Sam drama could have been a little better, I feel. I feel it could have been better handled. Y you know what I mean? Like, it just, I feel like there's, there could have been better explained. Sa they could have written Sam to not be a wishy-washy and like, I wish they would have made her make up her mind about Miguel before. Like the whole Cobra Kai, because he's in Cobra Kai thing, he was a jerk to her, I, I get it. But there needed to be some more clarity in that storytelling. So that's my short rant about season two. Still a very good season, still got good moments, but just not a very well-crafted story. It was kind of like a season that was built to slow burn off an already really great season, season one. So next up on the list for number three spot, we're going to go to season one. Because season one, they're going to be wrong. I know a lot of people love season one more than, more than others. But let's remember, okay, this is my list. Doesn't make it the right list, but it's my list. Which, so everyone's open to their own opinion. It's a different thing. Different things happen. But this is my list. Alright, so season one is at number three on my list. The reason it's so high is because the pilot episode is easily one of the best episodes of the series. I mean, if you didn't love Johnny Lawrence and the Karate Kid, watching him kick the crack out of a whole group of bullies, including Kyler and some other people we learned from the show, is pretty badass. And it's awesome. And then we introduced the whole rival between Johnny and Daniel... We start Miguel's journey, we see Miguel as a bullied kid, we kind of get to the gist of everything that comes together and it's kind of great. So I, I'm going to give season one quite a bit of praise because I don't have many negatives. It's just, I'm the type of person where beginnings are exciting, progression is better. Which is where we'll get to the next category for the next seasons. Okay, on to season three. Our runner up is season three. So... Season 3, now some people are mixed about this. Some people said Season 3 had good moments. Some people think Season 3 is an okay season. Some people liked it a lot. Some people think it's one of the best seasons. It was my favorite season of the show. Until I saw Season 4. Which, if you didn't figure it out, we're going to get there. Don't worry. We're going to get into Season 4, why it's so amazing. But we're going to break it into two parts. Okay, I'm going to briefly talk about why I love Season 4. And then I'm going to talk about it more in this discussion of Season 4. You get me? But we're talking about season three right now, so just forget about season four, just for a tiny bit. We gotta remember what we were talking about here is season three. All right, so season three of Cobra Kai. So we got the flashbacks that introduced kind of who John Kreese was before he joined Cobra Kai and basically recruited and brought Johnny into the world and his old buddy Terry Silver. We've learned about his time in Nam. You know, we know he's a Vietnam vet. He sort of touches on it in the in the present day seasons, like season two. But we really hadn't understood. What he's dealt with. And where his fight moves came from. How did he come up with the style for Cobra Kai and its dojo? Where did the fighting style come from? So we get into that. And it's really good. And we learn that Kreese, you know, he has a lot more to him than he seems. He's not just an old, tired out, roughed out vet that wants everyone to strike hard with no mercy. He's actually got a lot more um, going on than you think. There's a bit more to his character. He's got, you know, it's like the saying Shrek, you know. Ogres are like onions. They have layers. So Kreese has layers. In a different way. He's not, he's still a 
whole cold-hearted asshole and still an awful person, but he is he's got moments of of weakness that are bigger to see than you think. So that's the thing. We were introduced to Terry Silver, but the banger thing that made this season kick ass was one seeing Miguel kind of seeing Johnny already be an amazing character and seeing how Johnny brings together Miguel. We got to see Allie. The cool thing is this season did the this thing this season did what the Star Wars sequel trilogy failed to do. It took the old characters, brought them in as meaningful meaningful roles. We got Allie, we got Chosen, we got Kimiko, and all of them served a purpose. They were all here to stay in a great supporting role, and they served their purpose. It was fantastic. All right, but the number one reason why we got this is, so in Cobra Kai, we talk about how badass the fights between the kids are, right? So the, the house fight is one of my most favorite fights, and it was badass to see Hawk join the right side and kick ass. And there's many fights to talk about in season three. The Juvie fight's great. The arcade fight's great because it happens at the same time. The house fight is excellent. But the fight, the number one reason that this is number two on the list and used to be number one is when I saw the finale, when I saw Johnny go to talk to Kreese and talk to Robbie, and it set up Johnny and Daniel teaming up to beat the living shit out of Kreese. It was an amazing... That's how you do a finale, guys. It was amazing. It was brutal. Kreese could have killed Johnny at any moment, but Daniel shows up with some badass new moves, thanks to Chosen, and builds it up even better and makes it amazing. So season three is getting number two on the list. It's epic. All right. Now let's do the number one season is season four. Now, guys, we're going to talk about this more, but the brief synopsis that you need to know about season four is season four is amazing. It is emotional. It is heartbreaking. It is hilarious. It is action-packed in ways that you don't think it's action-packed. Like, yes, there are a couple episodes that don't have action, but there's always actions within the characters. People are usually sparring, or and then there's the tournament. The whole season is led, led up to the tournament. And when we get to the tournament, guys, which we'll talk about in the review, it leads up to some amazing fights. You feel tension. It's like a roller coaster ride. And you, you build adrenaline. You build adrenaline. It just keeps building, building, building. And you're learning the way of the fist. And it's badass. And there's performances that blow your mind. Like, you go into the season like, you, you know, you expect Terry Silver to be good. Like, as in, oh, the character is going to be cool to see him. The other cast we've gotten on here returning was awesome. Terry Silver is probably one of the greatest characters in the Miyagi-Do universe as a villain. You understand him, but he's just a badass villain. And you root for him, even though you know he's an evil, evil man. But you can't wait to see that. Like, like in the same way that you loved Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin, you will love Terry Silver. He brings the pain back to so many levels... And he's going to set us up on an even more epic path for Season 5, guys. That's right, we're getting Season 5. It's already filmed. We've talked about this in a couple videos. But guys, this is my ranking. I hope you guys liked it. Let me know your thoughts. I love Season 4. We're going to do the Season 4 review next. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you in the next video. Remember, strike first, strike hard. No mercy!